Flight attendants and pilots, what NSFW thing occurred at your jobs? Not a pilot or flight attendant, but I fly between 100 to 150 flights a year. One time, I was flying out of a small Midwest airport to Dallas. I roll up to the airport restaurant slash bar to get a bite and a drink before takeoff. I notice this lady sitting by herself at a bar, and a gentleman approaches her. They seem to be hitting it off, flirting, laughing, etc. Time comes to board the plane, and since this was on Southwest, it was pick your own seat. Naturally, they were sitting next to each other. I'm a few rows behind them. Flirting leads to touching and then kissing. You can see that hands are wandering everywhere. By this point, I am not the only casual observer. About three or four other guys are looking and laughing. We all bond over their public display. It escalates to a point where she gets up to go to the bathroom. About 30 to 40 seconds later, he follows. Apparently, they thought that was enough time to be inconspicuous. As he approaches the bathroom she is already in, a flight attendant stands in front of him and says, Nope, back to your seat. She knocks on the door and tells the lady to get back to her seat. All the observers are laughing at this point. The flight continues and she is practically mounted on him, doing everything they possibly could do while keeping clothes on. This continues until we land and all deplane. She quickly hurries off the plane. He is a few steps behind her, but she seems to be in a hurry. The other observers and I are talking about it and laughing as we exit the secure area into the baggage claim area. Then we see her, still several steps ahead of the guy, and she runs into the arms of her boyfriend and starts kissing him. Her in-flight guy just stops dead in his tracks, takes a couple seconds to observe, and then just leaves. I haven't laughed so hard in public with people I haven't met prior to or since. Story 2 as a flight engineer in the AF flying out of an island in the Pacific. A sailor had fallen overboard and drowned. The Navy recovered his body a few days later. Since this is downrange, only a body bag is available, not a transport casket. Before takeoff, the loadmaster comes to the cockpit screaming, yelling, and babbling. He says the body in the bag is wiggling. Turns out, eels have entered his body via his mouth and are wiggling within his body and causing movement. Story 3 just a plane passenger, but this happened on my last flight. About halfway through, the pilot comes over the intercom and says, Please come out of the bathroom. Smoking in an airplane is illegal. Naturally, this gets the whole plane on edge. Turns out it was an old woman who was completely naked and vaping in the bathroom while refusing to come out. They eventually had to break in and take her out, which then caused the woman to try and fight the flight attendants. She was arrested as soon as we landed. Story 4 Obligatory not me, but a friend of mine disclaimer. I have a female friend who flies transatlantic as a flight attendant. She told me a story about how one passenger she had had been in the bathroom for at least 15 minutes. Being a busy flight, people were pissed off and complained to her that he had been in there for a long time. She went to the door, knocked a couple times with no response. Obviously being concerned for the passenger's safety, the doors were opened. Inside was a guy on a toilet, trousers around ankles, headphones in his phone while adult videos played, and flaccid dong in hand. Bro fell asleep while jerking it in an airplane toilet. Oh, <laughs> embarrassment ensued. Story 5. My wife and I bought last-minute tickets to a family event and could not get seats next to each other. Once we boarded, I convinced the guy sitting next to my wife to switch seats with me. Nice guy takes my assigned seat, which was next to a woman who was apparently suffering from the flu. Five minutes after takeoff, she projectile vomits, but tried to use a pillow to cover her mouth. The pillow just made it spray out sideways all over the poor guy. He just sits there for a moment, frozen, and then slowly turns back to look at me with this face that said, You did this to me, and I will forever hate you for it. I offered to buy him a drink, but he ignored me. It was a six-hour flight. Story 6 a couple of our boys were on the return leg of an offshore crew change. Fifteen minutes out from the deck, they catch movement in the back. One of the passengers has unbuckled his harness and is getting up out of his seat. Big no on a helicopter. But before they can do or say anything, the guy grabs an airsick bag, drops his dax, positions the bag under his bum, and lets it rip. The bag lasted maybe three seconds. Explosive does not do this bout of diarrhea justice. Volcanic might not. If I hadn't seen the photos, I might not have believed it. It coated the floor, his seats, the seats beside it, and the poor guys in them. Splashed the windows and ceiling and rows of the seats behind. It was everywhere. And the smell. The real kicker is that even though they're 15 minutes from the rig, they couldn't go back. If they did, the chopper would be stuck on the deck until it could be decontaminated by a cleaning crew. There's only one deck, so we'd have to send a second helicopter out to winch down said cleaning crew, a dangerous and expensive operation. Meanwhile, everyone to come off swing in the next few days would be stuck on the rig until we did, while there wouldn't be enough beds in the town for the incoming crews. 
and the nature of the rig is such that it can't fully operate while there is a chopper on deck, literally millions of dollars in lost production. One dude with a rumbly tummy he didn't tell the rig medic about because he was just that keen to get home, and several hundred people are, potentially, right up shit creek. So, they take one for the team and push on. Tell the culprit to sit back down and put his harness back on and pray for a tailwind. Two hours flying back to base. It's Australia, tropical in summer, and commercial helicopters don't have great air con. The smell gets worse and worse, and it's not helped when some of the guys have to use the sick bags for their intended purpose. By the end of the flight, the pilots are all flying with their heads out of the cockpit windows just to breathe, and have given serious consideration to landing as soon as they were over the mainland, or any land. When they finally got in, it was approaching dangerous levels of stank. Never had a disembark that fast, and you'd better believe the pilots did shut down in record. There was a queue for hoses. When the engineer started to do damage assessment, it was even worse. That crap was runny and grainy. It found its way into every crack and crevice and bolt hole. The seats nearest to the guy were literally soaked in crap and puke, and it was in the life vests and cabin raft. There was even splash in the cockpit. Everywhere. We had to fly in a specialist cleaning crew, the kind that normally does crime scenes, and fully strip and dismantle the cabin down to bare fuselage. In the end, the guy's seat and the seat of the guy to his right were so saturated, so caked, and so stained and soaked with his crap, that we had to write them off. Tens of thousands for replacements, plus more in maintenance and lost flying time. The guy in that second seat sat there, coated head to toe in his seatmate's crap the entire flight without moving or saying a single word. Story 7. Survey pilot here. Sometimes when I'm flying back and forth for five hours straight, I need to piss in a bottle. One of my co-workers had his dong slip out of the bottle while he was going full bore and he pissed all over the instrument panel. You should have heard his desperation on the radio. A couple weeks later, for our bi-monthly rotation, a new guy took his plane. And we didn't tell him that Greg pissed all over it like a moron. Greg. Story 8. I was on a flight once, and when we got to cruising altitude, the pilot came on and gave us his speech about airspeed and weather and our destination, blah blah blah. When he was done, I guess the mic stayed keyed up, because you could hear him talking to the co-pilot, kind of softly, like when someone accidentally butt-dials you. You couldn't make out most of what he was saying, it was mostly beeps and clicks from the cockpit. At one point, he must have turned toward the mic and said to his co-pilot clear as day, Man, I sure could go for a cup of coffee and a blowjob right about now. So, everyone on the plane freezes in place, and all ambient noise stops as everyone is thinking, Did he just say... So, a flight attendant starts to rush up to the front to let the pilot know his mic is still on, and she gets about halfway up to the front when someone yells, Don't forget the coffee! Story 9. Not me, but a friend who's a flight attendant came across this really stubborn male passenger who wanted a sanitary pad that he saw the flight attendant hand over to a female passenger, convinced it was an eye mask thing you put on before sleeping. Arguing with her about it, she finally gave in and just gave a sanitary pad to him, who coolly removed the anti-adhesive and stuck it on his eyes and went to sleep. Story 10. This happened to another pilot at our company. We fly small planes with no doors between the cockpit and cabin. We usually put our jackets behind our seats. A passenger sitting in the front seat could easily grab them without us noticing. At the end of one flight, he noticed that the passenger on the left front seat was sitting on his jacket. Very odd, but whatever. The passenger's deplaned and he went to pick up his jacket. That's when it hit him. The passenger had crapped on the seat. He grabbed the pilot's jacket and put it over it and sat back down on it. It was only a 20 minute flight. How badly do you have to go? Story 11. I'm a pilot and spent a lot of time scouring NTSB reports for various reasons. One time I ran across an interesting one. The NTSB's probable cause was the pilot in command's improper in-flight decision to divert her attention to other activities not related to the conduct of the flight. Contributing to the accident was the exceeding of the design limits of the airplane leading to a wing failure. The rest of the report indicated that the occupants were partially closed and the front right seat was in the full AFT reclining position. Unfortunately, they did not survive the crash. But I always found the NTSB's wording of the report more entertaining than I probably should given the circumstances. They word things very professionally and I'm sure someone had to come up with a way of saying they were banging and crashed without actually saying it. Story 12. I am a test pilot for a small startup. Landed a few weeks ago at a small airport in the middle of nowhere to empty my piss bottle slash fill up my water bottle. My right seat wanted to check out the heli that was there, Long Ranger. I went to use the bathroom and he comes running to me. Turns out the two medics from the local medevac service were in the heli making bam bam. We got to watch them both run naked from heli to their training station. 
On the way out over the radio, we got asked to never discuss what we saw. Story 13. Flying for five years as a flight attendant. 1. Not on my flight, but a man took a crap in the middle of the aisle and wiped his butt with the curtain that separates the business cabin from the rest of the cattle. 2. Had a rather large lady come up to the galley and ask me to help her fix her bra strap. As a female, I obliged and figured it would be a quick little hook job. Nope. She took off her shirt. Her breasts hung in my face and I had to stretch her bra around her back and clasp it up. I should mention we have cameras in the galleys, so the pilots got a nice little show. 3. Had a 21-year-old male come to the back galley, puked all over it twice, then proceeded to projectile vomit on the aircraft door before heading back into the lav and then puking again. There were two of us in onboard hazmat suits cleaning it up while a lady is demanding for a cup of water. 4. A man had explosive diarrhea which flooded the lav and soaked into the carpet down the aisle. Had to divert because of the stench. And 5. It was moderate turbulence, some pretty bad bumps, so everyone, including the crew, had to be seated. A mother and her son piss in an air sickness bag and hand it to me in my jump seat. This doesn't even include the stuff you see on layovers. The list goes on and on. Story 14. Not a flight attendant or pilot, but I was once on a flight where I saw one of the flight attendants giving head to one of the pilots. Now, the thing to keep in mind is this was before 9-11, when the cockpit wasn't kept so securely locked. There was a bit of a bug spreading around the plane, which I was asked to take care of since I was the only doctor on board. I made my way to the cockpit to inform the pilot of the condition of the passengers, and as soon as I open the door, I see the flight attendant bent over with her head in the pilot's lap. I could not believe what I was seeing, but I managed to snag a quick photo of it. Story 15. Not totally on topic, but I fly a lot for work, and one time I walked to the bathroom as a flight attendant was walking out. She saw me heading in right after her and said, Be careful, there's a bomb in the bathroom. I think it was a nervous reference to her just having blown up the toilet, and she quickly realized what she said, as I gave her this perplexed look walking into the bathroom. She pulled me aside as I walked out and apologized profusely, probably knowing she had lost her job if someone less understanding had heard it. Story 16. Best friend is a flight attendant. She's seen some things, man, and some stuff. One woman pissed herself. One woman fainted and then pissed herself. Her colleague got caught by a passenger miming a BJ, but not from an angle where you could tell it was a mime. And she'd like you all to know that they see you, yeah you, with the blanket. They see. Story 17. On a flight to Cancun, everyone was drinking, getting their vacation on early. Somehow, a passenger lets loose the most silent, yet most deadly fart ever. It was the kind of smell that caused complete strangers to become friends in a shared moment of horrid existence. Lots of gagging. The stench awoke my sleeping GF. The stewardess, en route to a call button further up the section, stopped, gagged, then turned back around, fleeing to safety. Story 18. Used to fly a small commuter plane. 19 passengers, no door behind the cockpit, also no flight attendant. It's really loud, so communicating is difficult. Hand signals only kind of thing. Just took off on a 30-minute flight, and a passenger taps my shoulder, which startles the hell out of me because I can't see him approach me, and I'm hand flying. Turns out he just needs to take a leak. Okay, no big deal. Except, we don't have a bathroom on the plane. We do have these gel packs to use though, so I hand him one and go back to flying the airplane. No autopilot. The flight is full, and I'm not sure where I expected him to go. Back to his seat, maybe? Nope. Instead, I look over to the other pilot, and only inches away from our face is this dude's long, wrinkly dong and hairy bush that probably hasn't been kept to in decades. As the guy is pissing in the gel pack, we hit some rough air and urine goes everywhere. On the avionics, both of our uniforms, and my bag. As if that wasn't enough, the whole plane saw it. Once he's done, he hands me the gel pack. Like, I'm supposed to do something with it? Oh no, buddy. I hand him some napkins and point to go back to his seat. Story 19. Not a flight attendant, but I work for an airline and my team receives all the incident reports for what happens in the airplane slash airport. Some of the incident reports that came in were so shocking. Every summer, we'd have multiple incidents of people banging on board, in their seats or in the bathroom. That's pretty standard. But here are some of the more notable ones that came to our team. 1. A woman breastfeeding a kitten, refusing to stop. Yes, you heard that right. No, I'm not kidding. 2. A woman who exposed her breasts completely and ran up and down the aisles. 3. Drunk man attempting to molest the woman beside him by pretending he was asleep and touching her slash falling into her lap. Really, dude? A woman on a red-eye flight was asked to stop touching herself. No blanket or anything, just her and her whispering eye out for all to see. The flight attendant said in her report that she didn't make eye contact but told the woman, everyone can see what you're doing and we need you to stop. The woman was so embarrassed, uh, gave a panicked sorry and stopped. 
and 5. This happened at the airport, but it's my favorite. A male was using the airport washroom, then a fully naked man comes crashing down out of the ceiling right on top of the man using the washroom. The naked man scrambled and climbed right back into the ceiling without saying a word. The man using the washroom was in complete shock and told one of our managers that we have a problem in the washroom. I howled at that. Security and the police couldn't find this guy for the longest time, but when they finally did, he was a homeless guy living in the ceiling, still naked when they found him. He got in because of the construction at the airport. My sister was working at the airport when this happened, and the incident report came from the head of security. I giggle every time I think of this. I've had so many WTF moments working in my department, I truly can't believe some of the things that happen. Story 20. Not an attendant or a pilot, but one time on a flight to Hawaii, my mom was sitting behind me and next to this guy who was setting off some weird vibes. I couldn't tell at the time because I'm generally clueless and enamored with his beautiful show cat he had under the seat. My mom was next to the window, sleeping, when she felt a lot of action going on next to her. She looks at her seatmate and he's furiously jerking off under a thin blanket that shows everything. He stares right at her like the scene from We Need to Talk About Kevin. My mom clams up and didn't tell me or the flight attendant what was happening, which was kind of stupid in hindsight. I was awake watching a movie in front of her, never knowing that was going on. Story 21. I was a flight attendant in the Marine Corps. Inside joke. Helicopter crew chief mechanic who flew in the back of a helicopter and served as the aircraft commander's extension of authority in the cabin of a plane. Also loaded cargo, calculated weight and balance, operate crew-served weapons, and generally just worked as an additional set of eyes and ears, especially for things the pilots can't see. For example, looking straight down. Anyway, I worked on V-22s, and for cross-country flights, we would go up over 10,000 feet. We had a bunch of auxiliary fuel tanks in the cabin, so you could squeeze by then if you needed, but you can't really see back there. The guy in the back said to me on ICS, internal comm system, Hey, I'm going off ICS. If you don't hear from me in two minutes, come back and put my oxygen mask on. He came on ICS a short time later and I asked on a private channel what was going on so the pilots wouldn't hear. And he took off his oxygen mask at 25,000 feet so he could jerk it while hypoxic. It's along the lines of autoerotic asphyxiation. Story 22. I was on a flight to China. One of the passengers up in business class decided to take advantage of the unlimited drinks he was offered before takeoff. He got plastered. When the plane started to take off, he decided to take a sleeping pill to tide him over for the 14-hour flight we were about to endure. Well, shortly after takeoff, the guy decided he needed to use the bathroom. He ventures back to where the stalls are, but shoots past them. He walks about three rows ahead of my row, whips out his dong, and pisses all over the row and the people in it. They had to move the passengers, rip out the seats, and monitor the guy for the rest of the flight. Whatever happened to him, I have no idea. I'm just glad he didn't hold it in for three more rows. Story 23. I used to work as a baggage guy, loading and unloading planes. On our planes, we had to put the passengers' pets in a small area in the front belly compartment. We had an inbound flight that had quite a few pets on board. When I opened the compartment door, I was hit with the most gut-wrenching dog crap smell. Once I was able to see through my watery eyes, I saw one large dog kennel pressed up against a small kennel. The idiots that loaded the plane put both the kennel's front gate's ends together. The larger dog must have pressed its butt up against and crapped through the gate because the little dog was covered in it, and it was in the corner quivering and whimpering. Trying to explain and apologize to the little dog's owner was one of the hardest and yet funniest things I've ever had to do. Story 24. Flight attendant here. Pilots are hooking up with flight attendants constantly. I've walked in on two different guys in the bathroom. Lock it, people. A couple weeks ago, I had a lady use the lav and didn't even shut the door. I see camel humps daily, the male equivalent of a camel toe. I've stopped people trying to get in the Mile High Club. Uh, there's also plenty of rumors of pilots and flight attendants hooking up mid-flight, but I myself have never experienced this. When one pilot has to go to the bathroom, a flight attendant will go up in the flight deck. Oh, and last year, I had a guy who was drunk slash on drugs and molested a female passenger. Guy got arrested, obviously, and I had to give a statement. Story 25. I'm not a pilot or a flight attendant, but I do work the ramp. There's a few things I'd like to share. Ladies, please wear underwear, please. Guys, too. Working smaller regional jets, I've seen a lot of, um, naughty bits because some people prefer to go commando. When you walk down the jet bridge and leave your carry-on for valet, if you wear a skirt and no underwear, the people on the ground 12 feet below you have a chance to catch a glimpse at your bits. It's not often, but 10 years of doing this, I've seen quite a few people's junk both male and female because of the shorts slash skirts and commando. 
We're not offended, but we will make lame jokes about you for the next 10 minutes. Put a goddamn name tag on and in your bag. Tags fall off. If we have no quick way to ID who you are in your bag, we do search and catalog your belongings. Like the dirty, crusty panties I had to dig through wearing gloves to find the syphilis meds to help return a lady's bag. Or the bag with the laptop with a huge Iowa Hawkeye sticker on it to which the password was GoHawks1. That took four tries to guess. Their browser history was eclectic. Found that joker on Facebook after closing the various adult video tabs. Khaki pants and some J. Crew shirts are not enough to ID a person. Or the singles cruise guy whose bag had no ID and we ended up sending it to HQ to sit in a warehouse. That guy had like 10 to 12 Polaroids of his dong just laying around in his bag. Not in a stack, layered throughout his clothes. His photo from the singles cruise was all we had to go on. No name, just dong pics. Like a calling card or something. Hand it to ladies on a single cruise, find a mate? I don't know. I still wonder about him. 20 plus condoms left over in his bag. Did he buy the big box and slam, or did he get the medium box and do okay? I tell you one thing, that dude had high hopes and swung for the fences. I've reconnected people to their bags through boner pills, names on magazine subs, to dubious publications, and all manner of diseases relating to naughty bits because of medication. I've seen your adult video stash, your dildos, vibrators, and your crotchless panties, and your lube. I found actual photographs, like proper prints of stuff I won't even describe, but it was old people doing stuff. We never say how we found you, nor do we mention your contents at all. The looks on people's faces when they come to collect or the shift in tone of their voice once they put two and two together is priceless. Just use a name tag. Like, it happens. You don't want syphilis, I'm sure. I don't want to touch your crusty ass underwears. 